Welcome to the Bluecoat computer-based training module, SSL Protocol Overview. This module describes how the various components of the SSL protocol work to provide secure network communications. This module assumes that you have at least some familiarity with basic security issues related to network communications, including authentication and encryption. When you have finished the SSL Protocol Overview course, you will understand the various versions of Secure Socket Layer, or SSL, and its more recent successor, Transport Layer Security, or TLS. The use of certificates to verify the valid identity of each side of a communication, and the various cipher suites used to encrypt and decrypt SSL traffic. SSL and TLS are cryptographic protocols designed to provide security for communications over a network, Typically, the acronym SSL is used to refer to both SSL and the more recent TLS protocols. With SSL, certificates are used to authenticate the identity of each party to a communication. Once authenticated, the two parties exchange a session key. This session key is then used to encrypt and decrypt data flowing between the parties. Netscape developed the original SSL protocol. Version 1 was never publicly released because of serious security flaws in the protocol. Version 2, released in 1995, also contained a number of security flaws. SSL version 3, released in 1996, represented a complete redesign of the protocol. Newer versions of SSL TLS are based on SSL 3. TLS 1.0 was first defined in 1999 as an upgrade of SSL version 3, there is no interoperability between TLS 1.0 and SSL 3.0. TLS 1.1 was defined in 2006. TLS 1.2 is the current version, defined in 2008. TLS 1.3 is in the works, but not yet released. We are ready to describe what actually happens during what is called the SSL handshake. The client contacts a server and sends information such as the client's SSL version number, cipher settings, session-specific data, and other information that the server will need to communicate with the client using SSL. A number of encryption cipher suites are available, such as RSA and Diffie-Hellman, and the client and the server negotiate the choice. The server responds with its own SSL version number, cipher settings, session-specific data, and so on. The server also sends its own certificate at public key, and if client authentication is required, the server requests the client certificate. The client uses the information sent by the server to authenticate the server. The client then creates a pre-master secret for the session, encrypts it with the server's public key, and sends this encrypted pre-master key to the server, along with the client's own CA certificate, if requested. The server uses its private key to decrypt the pre-master secret, and then performs a series of steps, which the client also performs, starting from the same pre-master key, to generate the master secret. Both the client and the server use the master secret to generate the session keys, which are symmetric keys used to encrypt and decrypt information exchanged during the SSL session. The client and the server agree to use the session key to encrypt future messages. The SSL handshake is now complete and the session begins. A digital certificate certifies the ownership of a public key by the name subject of the certificate. Commercial certificate authorities, or CAs, charged to issue certificates, and customers expect certificates from the major CAs to be pre-installed in their browsers. Large enterprises often act as their own CAs and provide certificates. Sites can provide their own self-signed certificates as well, acting as their own CA, but this is inherently less secure. To view the certificates installed in Microsoft Internet Explorer, go to Tools, Internet Options, Content, and click Certificates. The Certificates window has tabs for the various certificates. There are two types of certificate authorities, intermediate CAs, which are issued by other CAs, and root CAs, which are issued by themselves. In order for a certificate to be trusted, the certificate must have been issued by a CA that is included in the trusted root certificate store of the browser. 
If a particular certificate was not issued by a trusted CA, the browser then inspects various intermediate certificates in a process called certificate chaining until a trusted root certificate can be inspected. You can view certificate details by selecting one of the certificates and clicking View. The General tab displays the dates for which the certificate is valid. The Details tab contains more detailed information including the signature hash algorithm and the public key. In this example, the signature hash algorithm is SHA-1. SHA is an acronym that stands for Secure Hash Algorithm. SHA-1 produces a 160-bit hash value, typically rendered as a hexadecimal number 40 digits long. In this example, the public key is RSA with 1024 bits. As mentioned previously, this key is used during the SSL handshake. We'll talk more about ciphers and encryption algorithms next. As discussed earlier during the SSL handshake, the client sends a list of cipher suites it supports, and the server responds with a cipher suite it selects from the list. Each cipher suite defines the following. The key exchange algorithm used to determine whether and how the client and server will authenticate during the handshake. The block or stream encryption algorithm used to encrypt the message stream the message authentication code algorithm used to assure the integrity and authenticity of the message, and the pseudo-random function used to create the master key, a 48-byte secret shared by the two peers in the connection. There are two types of key exchange algorithms, symmetric in which the same key is used for both encryption and decryption, and asymmetric in which one key is used for encryption and a different key is used for decryption. Diffie-Hellman is a key exchange algorithm that allows two parties to establish, over an insecure communications channel, a shared secret key that only the two parties know, even without having shared anything beforehand. The shared key is an asymmetric key, but like all asymmetric key systems, it's inherently slow and impractical for block encryption. The key is used instead to securely exchange a symmetric key used to encrypt subsequent communications. RSA, which is an acronym of the initials of the three developers, was one of the first workable public key crypto systems and is widely used for secure data transmission. The encryption key is shared publicly. A different decryption key is kept secret. Unlike Diffie-Hellman, the RSA algorithm can be used for signing digital signatures as well as symmetric key exchange, but it does require the exchange of a public key beforehand. All cipher suites supported by the proxy SG use the RSA key exchange algorithm. RSA and Diffie-Hellman are both based on supposedly intractable problems, the difficulty of factoring large numbers and exponentiation, and modular arithmetic, respectively, and with key lengths of 1024 bits give similar levels of security. Neither is significantly less secure than the other. The nature of the Diffie-Hellman key exchange does make it susceptible to man-in-the-middle attacks because it does not authenticate either party involved in the exchange. This is why Diffie-Hellman is used in combination with an additional authentication method, typically digital signatures. When using RSA, a 1024-bit key is considered suitable both for generating digital signatures and for key exchange when used with block encryption while a 2048-bit key is recommended when a digital signature must be kept secure for an extended period of time, such as a certificate authority's key. Most encryption systems offer a choice between RSA and Diffie-Hellman rather than combining them. A more recent variant of the Diffie-Hellman protocol is the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman exchange, which uses elliptic curve cryptography based on the algebraic structure of elliptic curves over finite fields. The two most common types of encryption algorithms are the block or bulk and stream ciphers. The block cipher uses a deterministic algorithm that conducts operations on fixed length groupings of bits or blocks. By using a transformation specified by a symmetric key, a block cipher is able to encrypt bulk data and is one of the basic components of many cryptographic protocols in use today. The Data Encryption Standard, DES, 
and the more recent Advanced Encryption Standard, AES, algorithms are examples of block ciphers. A stream cipher, on the other hand, takes plain text characters or digits and combines them with a pseudo-random cipher digit stream or key stream. RC4 is the most widely used stream cipher. The MD5 message digest algorithm is a widely used cryptographic hash function producing a 128-bit hash value, typically expressed in text format as a 32-digit hexadecimal number. One of the issues with MD5 is that it is not collision resistant and so is not suitable for applications such as SSL certificates or digital signatures that rely on this property for digital security. For this and other reasons, Secure Hash Algorithm 2, or SHA-2, is becoming more widely used. SHA-2 is a set of cryptographic hash functions designed by the NSA, consisting of six hash functions with digests, or hash values, that are 224, 256, 384, or 512 bits. SHA-2 and its predecessor, SHA-1, are the secure hash algorithms required by law for use in certain U.S. government applications, including use within other cryptographic algorithms and protocols for the protection of sensitive, unclassified information. By default, the proxy SG is configured to allow SSL v2 and v3, as well as TLS v1, v1.1, and v1.2 traffic. The cipher suites available for use differ depending on whether you configure SSL for version 2, version 3, TLS, or a combination of these. Many cipher suites ship with the proxy SG of varying strength and key size, as shown by this sample table. In general, the larger the key size, the greater the strength of the encryption, but be aware that larger key sizes may also affect performance. The cipher list exported by the proxy SG can be modified, depending on security policy requirements. Thank you for watching. This concludes the SSL Protocol Overview Training. For more information on SSL-related topics, visit the following Bluecoat resources. The Knowledge Base at bto.bluecoat.com and the Customer Discussion Forums available at forums.bluecoat.com. For additional questions or comments regarding this training module, contact us at training.books at bluecoat.com.